I'm now going to briefly uh, describe the process that I used for acquiring data for the uh, ArcGIS animation. For a while now, I've been wanting to explore uh, data resources available through the United Nations, and I feel that I essentially hit the mother load with, with the website shown here. Now, uh, going to this website, if you look down the right-hand side, you'll notice that it has a breakdown of various types of data available through the United Nations. And I was quickly attracted to this entry here for statistics. And clicking on that, that delivered me a little bit further down that page to this block of uh, listings on various types of statistical data available through the United Nations. And uh, I went through a bunch of these, uh, all kinds of in interesting information in there. The one that I eventually ended up using was this one down here, UN Data, Statistical Resources of the UN System. Having gone there, I eventually ended up going to the seventh edition of the International Labor Organization's Key Indicators of the Labor Market, which I was able to download into a spreadsheet form. Now, having located this data from the UN, you might think that we were all set. We could just start loading this data into ArcMap and start generating maps. However, that's not quite the case. As you may recall from the previous video, ArcGIS displays its data by attaching it to one or more superimposed layers. And while I had added, while I had data at this point, I did not have any layer to attach it to, so I went off in search of a layer. And I found what I needed on a website belonging to, to an organization called Diva-GIS. And as their name would suggest, Diva-GIS makes their own GIS software, which if you are so inclined, you can download from their site. But um, my primary reason for being interested in Diva-GIS is that they provided a free uh, shapefile that I could use for this project. Logically enough, uh, Diva-GIS's website is diva-gis.org, and on their homepage there is a link to their free data. Now, just one thing I want to quickly point out is, although the word shapefile would suggest that it's a single file, in reality, it usually consists of a number of files. Um, in this case, uh, my country's underscore SHP shapefile uh, consisted of four separate files. And if any of those are missing, then your model will not work. And there can, be actually, there can actually be over a dozen files comprising a given shapefile, which can create a kind of file management headache. And it's actually one of the reasons that Esri is trying to uh, discourage their users from using shapefiles. Now that I have the data that I need, it's time to clean it up so that it's in a format that ArcMap will accept. However, I will let that wait until the next video. So, goodbye for now, and I'll see you in video number four.